three, two, one. Welcome to Libertarian Crusaders, episode number 13. Today we have a special guest, Vincent Canazzaro. Where's that last name from? It's an Italian, or Sicilian to be I exact. knew it, right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what kind of uh, areas of, uh, what's it, you're a videographer, journalist? Yep, yep. aspiring journalist, um, but I do a lot of videography, photography. And a lot of really cool, uh, funny uh, comedy bit videos. Like, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, my my um, real focus is definitely like creative shorts. I want to make movies, like actual long movies, but you got to start somewhere. All right. Yeah. Uh, he's the one that helped us do the Bitcoin parody mo- uh, video, movie, I guess, right. or video. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Zero. <laughs> Zero, <That's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was interesting. That, that was like, it's amazing how much work goes into oh, yeah. a two-minute music video. But uh, I think that is what spurred it to launch. Like, right after that, like a week later, it kicked off. Yeah. Yeah, after, around, hanging around 4,000. Right, we helped, and we helped Bitcoin. We did that. Now we need to help bring it down back to four thousand. I think a little bit, so we can buy back in. Yeah. I think we spiked it off a little too early, uh, and then we'll do another one to bring it back up over ten k, so we can make some money. Right. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to talk about Greta, Greta and climate change, or you know, sometimes called the weather. Uh, it's, it's weird how they kind of keep changing the names of what is the culprit over you know seasons. And it seems to be sometimes interesting that the only people that really care is uh, Europeans, right? Americans. Uh, the rest of the world doesn't care because the rest of the world is kind of making most of the pollution. So, you know, that'd be a drastic cut in their budget. Well, they're, yeah, they're in, in just industries are really not in a position to be picky about, like, the way that they're, they're manufacturing things, right? Because if they do, then it just cuts into their margins and they're not as wealthy as, you know, co- companies in the United States. So... All right. They have to skimp here and there, right? All right. But I'm convinced. I mean, I heard her speech. Uh, I was kind of on the edge and for a little bit, like on the fence, until she started crying, and that tear jerked me away and put all my logic and facts and everything I knew out the window. I was like, you know what? She's right. Uh, she was talking about, like, uh, I should not I should be at school on the other side. I mean, you could, right? Yes, you should be. But, uh, no, I'm <laughs> glad that you're here <laughs> chastising me, Americans, for putting what uh, – 0.02 percent of the pollution uh, in the in the ocean. Yeah. Right. It's my straws that are <laughs> the culprit. My straw using uh, sin that I've been doing for a while. Um, so yeah, I feel compelled now to just give up all my money and help her crusade. Shut up and take my money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, um, I think every major decision that we do here, not just uh, at a company level, but anything, should be. Uh, consulted by child activists all over. I agree, right? right? This is why everybody turned in their guns and there's never been another school shooting since. <laughs> it's for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, Orwell has like the children spying and telling on everybody, yeah. you know, so eventually it'll be the kids saying, well, you threw away a perfectly reusable straw. <laughs> right. And so now you're going to jail, Mr. <laughs> I like how they, keep, they call people who kind of question this sort of stuff like climate deniers. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's very cultist in the way you're like, you can't question things. That's so like one of the first things they say, you know, you're in a cult where you're not allowed to question. You're not allowed to ask questions. Uh, it's looked down upon. And like in this one, it's a weird one because if you ask questions, they won't just like look down on you. They'll screech at you and call you out everything but a Nazi. Shame. They'll use every shame tactic they have. You're attacking kids. 97% of scientists agree. <laughs> I mean, appeal to authority. Every single fallacy comes to work all at the same time. Right. Yeah, the, the argument's always that um, you're just arguing science. If you're not a scientist, then you don't really know. But Greta's also not a scientist. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she knows. But She skipped too much school. Yeah. Right, yeah. I think it's, so like, I'm, I don't, I guess there's this whole conversation like, well, let's not make fun of her because uh, she might have autism or Asperger's. It's like at the same time, people are saying, well, she's also an adult. All right, so maybe she's 16 or she's an adult. And I think that it is fair game to make fun of her uh, as uh, that's, the real world is the world is full of assholes and we just like making fun of each other right if you're an adult you've reached the adult level playing ground where we can make it fun of each other not just based on arguments um and that's not an ad hom an ad hom would be you're wrong because uh you smell uh, or an ad hom would be dude you smell like crap that's an ad- that's not an ad hom that's just being rude that's just making a mean statement <laughs> well like being a young adult uh they trot them out like well you're this is a young adult so you 
you can't criticize this person. That's why they're being put out there. Right. But and then again, the problem with that is aren't you supposed aren't your parents supposed to protect you from being you know, humiliated and maligned in public when you're a kid. Might put that kid, in, yeah, in a line of fire. Oh, that's that a prop. Stuff. Yeah, this right. is my shield. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, have you guys ever seen a uh, mini AOC? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. She made a return. Yeah. Oh, did, she, did she really? <laughs> yeah. She, yep. In the last she, day or so. She, okay. she just commented saying, "Interesting, interesting." <laughs> 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 No, I've, I've actually argued about the like mini AOC about how she was getting harassed and everyone that's like argued with me they're always saying like well where's the proof well you can't really you know where are you gonna find proof that you're just getting harassed like that right she's just received uh, death threats yep, yep. phone, phone calls, calls phone emails. calls yeah her parents too yeah. uh, just for being a little comedian making fun right Conan Bryan makes fun of every, everyone all the time right yeah. But you can't make fun of AOC. When I think of the timeless comedians of our era, I think Conan O'Brien first off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Coney is a funny guy. <laughs> and then, then who? Is it Stephen Colbert? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, are we talking about comedians that I hate? <laughs> Actually, I always liked Conan O'Brien. But yeah, yeah. the ones yeah. that are lifted up these days... I mean, Jimmy Fallon. That's a, that's a whole thing. I think Conan kind of veers away a lot of the political stuff. I think he tries to keep it wholesome, and he doesn't really make fun of his um, uh, the people that come on the show right. or, or turn them down. Um, it's got a weird sense. But I, I think, is he Swedish too? Or no, he's just Irish, right? Yeah, yeah Irish, that's what Irish, it is. Yeah. Right. What's up with the Swedes lately? They're kind of like Europe's Florida. You know, they're like they're the, trying to get rid of all their degenerates, so they're sending them over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Remember you, the last time they did that? They basically invaded all of Europe. So oh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's hold that back if we could. There's a Swedish scientist. His name is. They always have weird way of spelling the last names. Magnus Söderlund, uh, and he says that look, there's a crisis, a global crisis, climate crisis. In a way that we should kind of prepare for ourselves for this is. So start eating human beings. Start with the dead bodies to climatize our tastes and not make it so taboo and in a way that we could be ready to eat each other when the time comes. And that will help with uh, lowering population uh, increases. Uh, it's like, yeah, no one else in the world. I mean, I guess there are some Africans that would eat, that have been eating people, albinos. Those are like the worst people you want to be. If you're an albino, you don't want to be in Africa. They right. think they hold magical properties. But anywhere else in the world, I know China does eat a lot of, they eat pretty much everything, don't they? Uh, all right, well, I don't think a civilized place should be eating people, and right. uh, despite that there might be some places that would do that. I think that's a weird, um, a weird, a weird solution to climate change. Like, you know, we got to fight climate change. You got to stop eating cows and chickens, but we're going to start eating, like, your parents and, like, your old, whoever dies, all the old people and stuff. And, yeah. So, you know who likes that, though, is the, the communists. They want to eat the rich. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's such a weird thing to think and yeah. say. Like, what? I, I mean, they're they're not saying literally eat the rich. I guess. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, you have to quiz them, but yeah. they won't answer questions. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, these are kind of what the malice we're doing too. <sighs> eating uh, babies. Eating babies. Uh, the parents were so starved that they eat uh, their children. Um, like they're so full of hunger because. Mao messed everything up and to the slaughter. Well, I think uh, we live in such a privileged, privileged culture. We don't eat our killed kids anymore, but we use them as political shields. Yeah. So that's more expedient. It's better than, you know, right. actually eating them. We'll just, you know, swing away all criticisms by the using our kids as a weapon. Maybe that's why they're here. It's, uh, it's a good place to be vocal. Right. Uh, go to China. Yeah, they don't <laughs> yeah. care. <laughs> Talk about the police brutality. You'll disappear next day. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about child brides out in the Middle East. You'll be one of them. Right. right. Um, I think that shows something like the comfortability to at least come here to America and voice your thoughts about this sort of stuff or be used as a kid. Because uh, it's nice here. You know, we have toilets. You know, go to some places out there. It's like, uh, it's not a really nice place to kind of chill out and be vocal about these things. Uh, especially China. Um, and I think uh, your hint, you're, you're pointing out, like, very communistic. She does come off like one of these children from, like, um, the communist uh, revolution or in the uh, cultural change. Tattletale on their parents. Or right. Right. Say they're doing wrong, we're, we're like, wrong the, things. The kids were out there. Uh, 
killing their teachers, any adult, anyone who had any kind of Western influence or suspected of, and the kids were the ones that turned on them very uh, Orwellian, 1984, right. like you're afraid of your kids now because they might you know, snitch on you. Well, this proves that, unfortunately, kids are susceptible to the information they're given from the people they see in authority because they're so schooled, they're not really educated, they're taught what to think and not how to think. So they've got them hyped up and all this hysteria, which fear is the easiest emotion to get humans motivated by. So if it's not one like massive thing that's, you know, you gotta be scared of, like school shootings where they're having these drills where they're now shooting teachers with pellet guns mm. during the evacuation of the school, to me, that's way more, you're going to be way more traumatized from going through these types of drills than the likelihood of ever seeing a school shooting, which the, the statistics are tiny. All right. The, uh, the, watching the video of her saying the things she was saying, you know, she was like, you've stolen away my childhood mm. and um, I should be in school or whatever. And you're just like, the, it seems like the average person would look at that and think this is a child who's in a cult or indoctrinated or whatever. So I don't think it gave a good, and then you have like the hesitant applause from the, mm. uh, from all the people like, <laughs> you know, that was amazing. <laughs> you did a good job. <laughs> but they were kind of trying to save it. It right. was weird. I think they were trying, they were more afraid. Like, is this going to be like seen as uh, child, child abuse? You know, like is the world going to look at this like in a negative way or are they going to look at it in a positive way? I'd be hesitant to applaud for that too. Especially in that like, this day and age, like yeah. you can't use you can't just use kids like that. You know, how many times do you think she practiced that speech that her parents had her like, okay, <laughs> now do it again. Okay, now this time I want you to cry a little bit more, and I want you to feel like you're on the verge of crying, but no tears, honey. All right, all right, now let's redo this one more time. You kind of messed up that word, okay? Yeah. And in English, it's pronounced you know this way. <laughs> um, this how dare you, not dare y'all or whatever they say in Sweden. Right. Get the grammar right. Right, yeah, because <laughs> um, it looks like. Um, like she's kind of remembering her lines in a way because there's another scene where there were reporters asking her and it was a lineup of other children mm -hmm. and asking her questions and she would be like like one sentence response and just like doesn't know what to say. It's like, oh, there are other people here in the panel that would also like questions, I, I assume or I imagine. Yeah. Well, in one of the previous podcasts, I wanted to bring up the, the, the origins of public relations. This is something that... Edward Bernays coined the term on who's the nephew of Sigmund Freud. He wrote the book Propaganda. And so Greta, you, you could see her evolution. She's obviously been coached to where she's fluid and can speak perfectly off. It looks like she's speaking perfectly off the cuff, like no hiccups or anything like that. So they are moving a perception forward, I think. I, I, I was just going to say, like, you know, it's we were talking about like earlier about like, you know, fearing like the communist kids and stuff like that. And it's like, I don't fear Greta, but I do feel sorry for her. You know, like it's like it's classic um, child celebrity right now. You know, she's a little kid. Her parents are pushing her to travel around the world. You're not a little kid anymore at that point. You know, now you're a professional and your parents are pushing you. She's not really making the money. Her parents are making the money and she just has to like put on this persona for her parents at this point. And I kind of feel bad for that. That's kind of what, upsetting. What other childhood, famous child made it out all right into adulthood? Yeah. All right, I, I can't think of any. Yeah. Right. I, I turned 26 <clears throat> this past year and I saw this meme and it said, um, Britney Spears was 25 when she shaved her head. And I was like, oh my, oh my God, wow. like 25, like I beat that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better than Britney Spears. Yeah. <laughs> It's the it's the the propaganda thing. A lot of people drew a comparison to uh, Nayira Al Sabah, oh. who was the girl, the Kuwaiti girl, who was the daughter of the Kuwaiti oh, ambassador to the United States. Babies and incubators. Right, right. Yeah. That whole story, and and it was, what is this for? Like, what are you doing this for? Well, she's talking about babies and incubators, and the Iraqis are coming in and pulling the babies out of incubators. We need to do something. Damn. Don't think about it. Just do something. And yeah, just, when was this? I've never heard of this. The yeah. Gulf War. Desert 1990. Yeah. It was, it, after that, it was echoed by George Bush Sr. and like everyone in, white, in, uh, in Washington. And that was the whole like, cry for the Gulf War was babies and incubators. Babies and incubators. Hmm. There were no babies and incubators. <laughs> right. Huh. And it's, always, it's amazing how these lies, like WMDs, yeah. or, and, and 
they they need to trot out a kid to say, well, now climate change, you know. Um, I think I personally don't believe it. I do believe like there's a, there's a chance. That How it's, dare you? I think there's a possibility <laughs> that the world is warming, right? But How I, dare you? I know, I know. We don't. <laughs> they're claiming carbon is the problem when <clears throat> when when you go to science class. What does your teacher tell you that carbon based life? So, I think that if you're anti carbon, you might be anti-human so oh, against life in general yeah yeah it's like oh you can't break down carbon right you know? that's indestructible co2 right, right? Yeah. right yeah so i mean they, they also talk about how there's more plant life as a result of more co2 right that's what plants megafauna we're, so what we're doing is we're bringing forth the next generation of megafauna if really that'd like, be so cool these people are like <laughs> anti there must be anti-plants they hate plants imagine riding on anything. dragonflies as our mode of transportation right. oh, gosh man. that would be awesome all right carbon neutral all right well fern gully will be back again. yeah yeah i mean i'm down uh i think uh some of the stuff that you're missing, I think it is kind of a horrible experience that she's kind of going through because it is something that they kind of pummel you through in grade school because they do tell you, like, you know, the world is uh, running out of resources. we got to be conservative with what we have, uh, which is weird because, like, what is it? Do we live in a post-care society now or are we running out of resources, <laughs> right? It's one or the other, right? Well, one of the points Greta makes is she says uh, unlimited economic gr- growth. Economic growth. It's that. a myth. The myth of an unlimited economic they're, growth. They're shovel-ready jobs. Right. right. Obama said that <laughs> shovel ready job. Well, if we get rid of the shovels and we give everybody spoons, then we can employ everybody. <laughs> yeah. Two handed. Yep. Double the, I guess, income. Right. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think, though, like one thing they don't really talk about when it comes to the weather, there's a few things that like can also play an effect, and it's like solar weather. Have you guys ever like heard about that? It has to do with the yep. sun right. and like different um, UV rays that like hit Earth at different times, and then also polar shifts. You know, there's a few different things that could be playing an effect. Also, like, just a, a normal ice age. Like, what if we're just going into an ice age? Carl like, Sagan said, like, 30, 40 years ago that right now, this time, we should have been going through an ice age. Yeah. All right? They say the smartest uh, guy out there on the planet during that time, and I don't see an ice age. And he knew the world was round. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought he said it was a dot. But maybe. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I remember going to grade school, and they showed me the actual hockey puck uh, projection right i was there in science and biology and it's like yeah so uh this is what's gonna happen it was like going like this and it psh, right through like the, through the graph i was like we're fucked and i think uh maybe she has the same kind of uh propaganda miseducation and she's like the she's got the fear in her thinking maybe yeah the road is going to shit uh, and it's yeah. thanks to a lot of people out there just kind of pushing this sort of stuff so they can tax businesses, right? Carbon tax is another way just to tax productive companies. It's just a justification for, well, government needs to step in here right. and, and address this. That's the only like that's the only thing that they're really looking for. It's not about uh, private individuals deciding to buy uh, solar panels and electric vehicles, right? It's more than that. Right. And I think we've, we've seen what happens when government gets involved with that sort of stuff. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Solyndra, uh, that fell company out in West in California that tried mm-hmm. to put out these solar panels because that was going to be a new green wave of their future under Obama. So he kind of greenlit a deal of like tens of millions of dollars to this company that didn't really do anything. Mm-hmm. And of course, they went bankrupt, but that was just a ploy for them just to take that money, right? Um, kind of like uh, the current thing going on with Ukraine. That's just another way for Bin, um, not Bin Laden, uh, Biden, <laughs> Biden's son, son to sign for more money with all these kind of weird packages. Biden and Laden, Biden Laden. <laughs> Why not? Fifty uh, G's a month. Coincidence, like, right? Who couldn't use fifty G's a month, right? And of course, if, if you hate pollution, then you know abolish the biggest polluter on the planet. Right. right. Happens to be the U.S. government's military going out so there. I was, yeah, I was an Abrams tank mechanic, and just to start the tank, it takes eight gallons of fuel. So oh, wow. every time they turn it on, eight gallons down the drain. Wow. Why, are, why are you insulting America's military? Right. How tank? dare you? Why are you insulting the Abrams tank? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Uh, Badass. General dynamics, you know. <laughs> right. I never spoke they to wouldn't hire a me. guy in the military who had any kind of love for government contractors who are like military contractors. Like they, one hundred percent of them hate the guts of every. Because they, I talked to like my uncle who would say, yeah, there was contractors who were like the firefighters of our base, and they would just go drive around the base once a day, and that was it. Like that was all they had to do in Iraq. And it's, you're just like. It is amazing how much wasted... Look at what's the pollution of all those military contractors, too, right? Right. I don't think that... I think it's obvious that Greta is distressed from this information she's been given. And 
I think this is, it highlights how these people, they're not really concerned with their kids. They're just like, oh, this is our agenda. I'm going to push it on them, no yeah. matter the trauma or anything like that that comes about it. And that is, to me, the worst part of the whole thing is they're not trying to make their kid better and like console their kid. They're like, here, have all this trauma. Right. They're just trying to launch their own careers or their own selves into the spotlight. And here's my kid. Well, Britney yeah. Spears' father still has control of all of her money. Oh, really? To this day. Huh. There's a new story that came out this last week. That it I seems saw. like all those kids from those, from that Disney show came out kind of messed up. I don't know any of them that came out. Yeah. Justin all Timberlake's right. all right. He had a, the whole dick in the box thing. So. <laughs> that was SNL. That was a low point in his career. Yeah, I think so. Where's he been lately, though? Yeah, what does everybody think SNL is so great? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's in the news. That's the we should, we could have a whole story about that. Right. Uh, <laughs> that, that guy, Shane Gillis, was recently kicked off of SNL. Oh, yeah, that's wow. right. Yeah, for, for some jokes. Said some words that people didn't mm -hmm. like. Comedy, yeah, that's a, that's a totally different story. That's a total tangent I could go on. But, uh. <laughs> but yeah, so, but yeah, you'll never see her going off to any of these other countries or some of the most polluted rivers in the world. 95% of them are from uh, the Niger. Okay, no surprise. The Nile, the Indus, India, Ganges, again, India. Uh, Pearl, Ganges, Yellow. Hi, hey, and Amr, all Asians. I mean, the Potomac's not so great either, though. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's the <laughs> yeah. San Francisco or, I mean, we do have some problems here. I don't think they're at a great degree to this, but there is some, um, like, high E. coli in the river out in Sacramento or something like that that people are kind of bathing in, not knowing that there's a huge homeless camps out in the hundreds that are kind of crapping in the river, Ooh. and they're all swimming in it. Well, at least they're crapping in the river and not on the streets. Right. <laughs> well, there's apps now, I actually, uh, I'm sorry to say. Uh, right it's, you import a third road, you become a third road, and California now has apps to kind of warn you off of where all the poop cover sidewalks like, are. That this is, is nothing crazy. new, though. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing new. Like, you look at uh, the Civil War, right, and most most of these guys died from dysentery because they were scooping up water to drink that had just been shat in by the, you know, right. the guys upriver. So, I mean, and just the, uh, that's, that's what creates more pain and suffering than anything, I would think, is uh, military conflict, right? So let's yeah. first target that. Let's prioritize. So. Yeah, she says like the world is in, like the worst shape it's ever been right? in terms of like, people's lives and health. It's like people have been lifted out of poverty by in the billions now in the past several decades. Yeah, most people in America shower every day. That's, right. that's a first, I think, in, in I think that's a history. cool thing. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait, what? What? <laughs> well, how many days? Nobody here. Wait, you guys, <laughs> not you guys no. shower every day? Okay. <laughs> huh. All right, just making sure. Um, <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I think uh, she doesn't look at the other facts in terms of like the longevity of people's lives uh, increasing. The fact that many, many of uh, people's children don't have to die at uh, being stillborn or being dead, dead at birth, right? I think capitalism kind of brings that kind of happiness. Um, people don't, yeah, people don't, go ahead. I was just going to say, now you're going into like universal health care. Right. So you're going to slow down a little bit. <laughs> so you believe that everyone should have that, you know, that right to have a childbirth? Vincent, people are dying. <laughs> <laughs> the world is ending in 10 years. Are you ready for that? Yeah, it's 12. That's, I thought 12? it was 12 years earlier this year. Now it's 10 years, actually. Yeah, they oh. said it's 10 years. Speed up every day. Tom right, yeah. <laughs> had a good tweet. He said, uh, oh, uh, I almost want this 12 years to happen. ASAP, yeah. so that we can be 12 years from now, and then we can just point to all this crap that they were saying. Say, it didn't was, happen. I was disappointed with Y2K. I was too young for that, <laughs> but I was disappointed for it when I got older and learned about it. And yeah. then um, a little disappointed with 2012, you know, like that was supposed to be the big one, you know, earthquakes, right. tsunamis, all that. <laughs> I say it up. I say it up for Y2K. It's like, all right, 58, 59. <laughs> Airplanes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I wish. A uh, mad cow disease was supposed to spread. There's uh, avian flu was supposed to spread. Zika, Ooh. Ebola. Zika. Yeah, everything's supposed to be. You know, we should have been. You know, gone long under a long time ago. There's. This is a funny tradition in the United States. Is to, it's like the left. Uh, Michael Malice calls them the evangelical left, and it's this tradition of this uh sort of eschatology you know in in christianity like different protestant denominations have talked about oh the end of the world is coming soon i right. mean this was very popular yeah. like in um the mid 1800s that uh, uh like seventh day adventists br branched off from uh baptists as a result of all this you talking about the end of the world and so i think it's popular for now atheistic americans 
to cling to this other thing, which is the end of the world's coming soon. We got to prepare. And what are we doing? And I know more than everybody else because yeah. and I think it's uniquely, I mean, I, I think the rest of the world, that's why they don't care because <laughs> they don't have this. Right. Uh, I don't know if the rest of the world have, um, I guess most of them have internet, but I don't think they really care about what the Swedish girl is saying in, in America. <laughs> um, the rest of the world is going to be fine. You know, they say also in the same fact of um, to have less kids, right? Uh, or don't have kids. AOC saying, uh, I don't have one less kid in my life. Um, yeah, that's like, that's a weird thing that they're saying only like in America or maybe in Europe. The rest of the world is not paying attention to any of that stuff. The rest of the world is just popping up babies. It's not going to make any dent whatsoever in the number of human beings that are going to come out in the rest of the world. Um, I think that's a weird thing to kind of, I don't know, this goes maybe towards Marxism to kind of depopulize this kind of country, uh, import a different one that would be more seductive to saying okay to a new rulership, uh, better, you could say, tax slaves that are just goes along with the new system instead of, uh, you know, protesting against it. So I mean, it's a demographics game, you can say, but I think um, it's the weird stuff that comes out of Sweden, depopulize yourself, uh, cannibalize each other, uh, and now this girl coming from Sweden. I think Sweden very much is a weird place. I mean, I think some of the stuff you think from her, she would rant more about um, being the rape capital of Europe, right? Uh, they say like 53% of uh, rape cases are from, um, are, are these mass immigrants that they're importing in. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, it's a kind of a problem in there. But of course, I think that's like their shame or they can't even bring it up because it no, highlights. They don't, they don't talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, um, yeah. wasn't that guy who just, an American guy went to Sweden? Just the, get a, the rapper? The rapper, Yeah. right? ASAP <laughs> Rocky. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he's out there, American, chilling. Uh, and he gets accosted, and he's the one I think that w- went in jail for a night or two. No, right? it was months. For yeah. months, it was like a month or he was two. Locked I up think. For a while. Yeah, right. and Trump had to intervene in a way. I'm not exactly tweets, maybe, yeah. but <laughs> like at least that's better than militarily intervening. I right. think. Just to words, look right. out for your. I mean, we could citizen. win, right? We'd win. Yeah. Okay. I think oh, I would so. Hope, I would hope if I beat up some dude in Sweden. But so, Trump would go to bat for me, right? Yeah. I, I'm a rapper. <laughs> if that happened, if that happened in America, the whole left would be in protest because it right. was it, like the guy was not really attacking anyone. First off, he didn't lay hands on anyone. The bodyguard did, right? But the bodyguard did because the guys would not leave him alone, right? So, right. like you know, in that situation, the police come in, put a make a police report, and refuse to put say anything bad about the the actual attackers. I mean, come on. The left would eat that up. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, it's love like, that. why don't you people get out of our neighborhood yeah. or whatever? It's basically what he was doing. And so depending on what the race of the person is saying that, <laughs> man, right. that, could be, that could be a different story, right? If it was in Richmond or, right. <laughs> or in Georgia or, or Chicago, Jesse Smollett. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just think Sweden is a really messed up place. And it's, I don't know why they're, they're pushing for all this sort of stuff. They're... Like they had this weird thing about uh, pushing for, um, well, they say like there are more men drivers than there are women drivers. Uh, so it's kind of unfair that a lot of these uh, snow plows are going for the streets because men drive most of them. They should be focused on sidewalks uh, because women drive on bicycles. So of course, what ended up happening was most of the concentration of uh, cleaning out the streets or areas of transportation went to sidewalks and everything went to like a grid halt because nobody did there to kind of plow the streets. and. Cities were kind of snowed in, and <laughs> and everything came to a halt. Hmm. Snowshoes, right? That'd yeah, be, like just, just give everyone snowshoes. At the, I can't at that think point. of anything positive to come out of Sweden now. Well, yeah. they don't have a gun problem in Sweden, but they do have a grenade problem. So if we could uh, Wait, what? expand, if we could expand the Second Amendment, where we could have grenades, I think that we could take one positive thing from Sweden. Because hmm. they don't have any guns there, so they just plant bombs and throw grenades everywhere. Wow. Yeah. But that's not reported. They're either. able to make them or just buy yeah. them? or Yeah. Oh. It's grenades, actually. It's uh, decommissioned decommissioned grenades. Holy crap. Yeah. We should that's... do a whole episode on Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> I love Swedish fish. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Is uh, right. o- Ikea Sweden? Yeah. 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 Um, Those meat I've, uh, Comp rod yeah, is his okay. last name. All right, all right. They used to be badass. I mean, they were badass for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then they decided to socialize everything in the early you know, 20th century. And, and that's like, there's like this weird effeminate 
culture there too. Like uh, there's a, that famous gif of the guy like shooting the gun and then crying. <laughs> After he was Swedish. Like, yeah, the recoil is too much. <laughs> and, then he, and then it just shows this Swedish flag over his face. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They've wasted all the capital that they saved up uh, many decades ago. And their generations later just used it all up. And that's why their taxes are so high. And, and things are coming to a grind now. Uh, you can only get away for, with it for so long until you run out of other people's money. Right. What do you think about just Europe in general becoming so effeminate? Like, did all their most masculine men either get killed off in World War One and World War Two, or they moved to the United States, or whatever? I don't like, think you can ever get rid of it. Masculine, I think, is in your DNA. It's biological. I think what they can try to do is kind of pervert it in a different direction, and that's what they're trying to do. So I think they try to effeminate, uh, feminize them in a way, but they can't really get rid of it. I think that's their trial and experiment to see if they can but they don't realize it's biological. They think it's a social thing. I think eventually that's going to spit in their face and realize it's not a social thing. It's a biological thing. Um, but at least at the very least, we have Poland to kind of save Europe. Uh, I think that is the least uh, <laughs> emasculated man you'll find out there. Czechoslovakia is doing pretty good, too. Yeah. yeah. I know the guns. Yeah. Yeah. One of my heroes is from Finland. He was called the White Death, and he killed right. hundreds, hundreds of foreign invaders. Like he would put snow in his mouth so the people wouldn't see his breath. Right. Yeah. They told ghost ghost stories about him. He was one of the most, and he he got shot in the face and lived a long life. And he stitched himself back up. Right. The Finnish government, like they're like, you served your country well. We're gonna give you. <laughs> we're gonna give you a farm. We're gonna give you your own country. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah there's what some, a stud. Yeah. There's some holdouts. He was a I sniper, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Basic weapon, just out there. He wouldn't use the issued rifle. He's like, nope. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one. <laughs> he said all that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it is kind of weird. I think um, like England used to be a sword-carrying country, and now they're very emasculated, as you mentioned, in, in that respect. And I think that's kind of messed up, right? I think eventually all this stuff is going to bite them in the ass in the future, and everything will change course. It generally happens. Europe is always sometimes on the brink of destruction, and then it reverses course, and everything gets... It's like that whole meme that says, like, uh, strong men create good times, right. good times create well, weak men. It's a pendulum effect, virtually, right? right? Like... It, Sometimes it has to swing in a bad in a bad direction. Eventually, it it'll come back. So yeah. we'll come back greater, right? And uh, we'll make uh, Europe great again, and Western culture will come uh, stronger for it. And I think then we'll look back at what happened now, and hopefully not try to repeat that kind of nonsense. I think it's easier now to document and show what's all happening, so that hopefully we can document it for prosper prosperity, and then future generations can know what happened right like now we can laugh in the face of all gore and uh <laughs> right 10 years later he still has a private jet and we don't <laughs> well he helped finance greta so did he really yeah it's um, what his, how is he still in the public eye it's his pr campaign that he made i forgot what it's called but it's something like the world is ending tomorrow like, it's something <laughs> like, that. It's something like that. and um but yeah that's that's who's financing because you know these people in, in sweden they don't they really don't have that much wealth built up she can't just travel around the world, go to New York City to speak in front of the UN. Right. So it's like someone's paying for it. Was this it. a doctored photo that I saw of her with um, Soros? Soros. Yeah. That's. I'm sure that's fake. Yeah. I'm sure. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if it was fake. Saw one with her standing with Hitler. Is there a time machine? That, or? <laughs> that one I think is real, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Didn't she? She had to sit down with Obama, right? That one's real. Too. But she wouldn't. <laughs> she wouldn't grill him on the twenty six thousand bombs that he dropped in yeah, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. I mean, that's so. so much for caring for children, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the one where I think she's near Trump, and Trump's like walking by, and her face is like. Yeah. Yeah. He just blows her off. Yeah. That's the best thing about Trump is he kind of, you know, he he's right in so many instances like that when it's like, yeah, that was the thing to do. Just everybody else is kowtowing to this little girl. Just walk by, pretend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't no, have time you, for this. Have you seen how Trump reacts to people in like different countries? Like it's the funniest thing. Like, if you look up, if you look up Justin Trudeau being ignored by Trump, it, it, you will laugh so hard. There's that, and then also um, the the president or prime minister of Turkey, and he was trying to get, Justin Trudeau was actually trying to get his attention, and Trump was there during the situation, and um, the prime minister just completely ignored him. Like, he, he like got his attention for half a second, 
and then turned and like gave the other guy next to him. Purpose. That's, that's Brazil. Was it? Bra- oh, yeah. it was Brazil. Yeah, Brazilian president. Yeah, yeah, Bolsonaro. Yeah, because yeah. 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 like he came into the handshake, and Bolsonaro kind of looked at him and like went over here. Yeah, <laughs> he's a stud. Yeah. Well, Bolsonaro <laughs> knew he was a racist. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. He can right. sense it. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah. He can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in Canada, it's not as offensive. To like blackface, do the blackface. yeah. Another Repeatedly. video just came out two days ago of him doing just blackface, but also uh, leg face, face, black leg face. He had black leg face. It was sound, right? <laughs> His whole body was black. Was he? He wasn't doing an accent, was he? Uh, uh, I don't know. Whoa. There, there was some. Well, he has of... a he has a sock or something in his pants. Also, I don't know. Right. Oh my oh, gosh! <laughs> it's what? Did he use shoe polish? That's what I want to know. Like, why do people use shoe polish? That doesn't come off that well. Right. Oh. This guy was doing this in his 30s. We should know more about this, but I don't know anything. About right. It. The fact that he's doing it more than once is uh, going to a weird fetish world, I think. But they'll, yeah. they'll never brigade at his gates and say that he needs to resign. I don't... Uh, this is... There's no intellectual honesty, and that's what's Didn't really Greta sad. meet up with him recently, also? Probably. Like, he's in, she's in Canada right now. I'm well, pretty sure he was, like, doing his thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, Justin Trudeau is a good guy. He, um, so I'm actually half Filipino. And he loved to send thousands of shipments of trash to the Philippines. Yeah. And just leave them there and just hope that they'd take care of it. I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Philippines, but it's, they're not a wealthy country. They're, like they, a lot of people there live in trash. All right. So um, that was pretty, pretty messed up. I was ready to join the war with the Philippines against Canada. Yeah. Right. Right. There's, nothing, there's nothing in the laws that says that you can't join right. uh, the Philippines and go to war with Canada. Oh, I yeah. was like, Duterte was like, what, Duterte? Something like Duterte? that. Duterte? I, I say it wrong all the time. It, he was uh, based. He, he, he just was, said. He was talking trash, and it was great. I <laughs> yeah, was ready I was like, to, like, go to At war. the end of this week, you don't come pick up this trash. We're going to war. Yeah. And he just came out with the meshes saying that, look, if you come across a corrupt politician taking bribes, shoot him. Don't kill him. Shoot him or beat him up, and I'll vouch vouch for you, and you won't get any prison time. That's awesome. He just said that this past week, a few days ago. Yep. It's a little chaotic. (laughs) It's a little chaotic. But again, he does like, he does like, he's cool with like murdering drug dealers. Right. Oh, yeah. Have some guns. No, he. (laughs) He said um, when he got elected, he dumped the bodies of three million drug addicts in Manila Bay, which is like the biggest bay. And um, that's a pretty, pretty, pretty bad thing to say in this time period, I think. Yeah. yeah. But they have a huge drug problem. Right. And right. it's mainly uh, pharmaceuticals coming from China. So I was hearing a crazy, oh. uh, I, I was listening to that, that um, podcast that Shane Gillis does, the guy who got fired from SNL. And he was, they were talking about Magellan and how he showed up to the Philippines and uh, he made friends with one of the guys, one of the leaders, but then um, the, that leader was like, yeah, I'm having trouble with this other guy over here in this other island. And so Magellan's like, no problem, got it. And Magellan's men, they go with him to like fight this guy, and then they all just get mowed down with like um, arrows and stuff, and all his men leave him behind. Oh, <laughs> Magellan, man. Magellan gets That's blown right. out by himself. That's how he dies. The, the Philippines are crazy. They're, they're crazy people. <laughs> they don't, but they're, they're, they're good when it comes to like, for like with what we're talking about, because they just want to be left alone. They're good you know, with uh, right. Christianity. They came and yeah. embraced that. I think that's great. Yeah. I think there was a situation where they wanted to have their own priests because for a while it could only be like, I think European ones or something like that. And then they came finally to a good conclusion, like maybe in the eighties that they can have their own Bishop ar- and bishops Cardinal and stuff like and, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So where there's a lot of history, they say like all this ruthless um, conquering by the West. Philippines is an interesting example because there really wasn't much of there. It was most there were some islands, but for most of it, it was an embracement of it um, and love of Christianity. Yeah, so, a little oh, bit, yeah. a little bit. Um, <laughs> well, like so, I mean, they were conquered by the Spanish, right? And that's where like a lot of like Christianity came from. They were kicked out. Yeah, they were kicked out for, by the, or they kicked the Spanish out. Um, and then the United States, they've been kicked out, I think it was three times. The United States? Yep. When did the United States get kicked out? Um, twice in the early 19th century, and then the last time was in, I think, the early 90s. Right. Is the Philippines but, a U.S. affiliate island or something? Uh, they have bases there. So, yeah. so I went to the Philippines in 2014, and when I went there, uh, we went to a, an old military base that has, since the dawn of United States military bases in the Philippines, has been open, closed, open, closed, and it's called Subic Bay. And um, when I went there, it was closed. 
but I think it's open now. I think Trump got it back open because Duarte, Duarte, he's like he's um he I think he likes Trump a little bit, so um, he was able to convince them to have like a little bit of a military presence. But they have a big Islamic terrorist problem in the Philippines, mm-hmm. so I think that's what it, what it really has to do about. Right. Yeah, dude, he's a he's an interesting guy. I mean, he's uh, the media portrays him as this horrible Dictator. person, yeah. and yet you you can almost sympathize with the struggle that the average person goes through. I mean, the you know, and certainly Islamic terrorism. Yeah, once it once it gets a foothold there, <laughs> it's like in Indonesia, it got a foothold, and now like the right. country. Oh no, no it's so. gonna be fine. It's just a minority religion group, right? It conquers and right. kills everybody. Yeah. Same thing happened like in other places um, north of India. Um, I guess close to, I don't know what country it is, near Pakistan. But yeah, they just come and they start with the minority and then they just conquer the rest and kick out anybody else. Kashmir? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think so far what I heard seems good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I really did enjoy his threat to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll tell, I'll, I mean, back to the climate change situation. Like, I'll tell everyone this. The first time I ever saw real poverty in my life was when I went to the Philippines. You know, like I saw little kids, you know, taking a shit in the street and they're not, you know, they're not on heroin like in California. Like these are just little kids and they're asking for a nickel, like they're begging for a nickel. And um, but, you know, like when it comes to like with Greta and stuff, she wants these people to have like what solar panels, electric cars. And, you know, I'm sorry, but you're the gas powered engine that costs fifty dollars. That's going to that's what they're going to have the rest of their life. Right. Right. And the. uh I remember Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao, buying homes for people. He's he's so wealthy that he can just buy homes, and it's probably not nearly as expensive over there no. either. <laughs> and, but uh, he's like beloved over there, and I, you know, I I love him too. But the uh, it's it's crazy to think how much success he's had and how much he's able to do for other people over there. He was well. a politician too. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But he'll, and a singer. But he'll do yeah. something and not stand there and yell at everybody else. You have to do something. Yeah, he's doing something. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, comes up to our hour here. Uh, thank you so much, Vincent, for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. I think it's um, a weird place. I guess you got to hand it to her that she's able to kind of uh, throw democracy on the, on, under the bus, you can say, and come towards a more conquerable approach to this and kind of Say, well, forget what everyone else thinks and forget facts and science. It's based on feels. So at least that's a bit relieving, revealing, right? We always say that. It's always emotions with the left. Um, but yeah, with that, stay liberated. Get off my property. If they keep printing money, I'll keep printing guns. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say. <laughs>